So he's basically saying, what happens if you if you watch a story at a young age and it affects you subconsciously? You don't realize the, the kind of effect it's having on you until later on in life, um, where suddenly you find yourself manifesting aspects of that story. And then doesn't it feel like the story chose you rather than you choosing the story? That absolutely happens. Um, uh, <laughs> My wife will joke uh, that when I was young, there was a, uh, a series uh, that the BBC put out that was broadcast on uh, PBS here in America. It was an adaptation of the Sherlock Holmes adventures with Jeremy Brett playing Sherlock Holmes. It's Granada Television, it's a really wonderful series. It's probably one of the most accurate depictions of Holmes on film. And I had watched that as a kid, and uh, it was one of my favorite things. And then I forgot about it. Fast forward 20, 30 years, I'm with my wife, I tell her how much I love this show, they start selling it on DVD or whatever, and I'm like, hey, why don't we watch some of them? I think, I think you'll find it really enjoyable. So my wife and I sit down, and as the show starts going, and Jeremy Brett is playing Sherlock Holmes, the things he's doing, like his mannerisms, the way he talks, the way he behaves, is exactly how I behave. <laughs> and literally, my wife is like moving away. <laughs> She's like, do you realize how much you act like Jeremy Brett in real life? And I was like, I did not realize. <laughs> like, oh my God, I totally do, right? So I had, there, there was something about the Sherlock Holmes character archetype, because that's another thing, is usually our entry point into a story is we find a character, a type of character that we really resonate with. And so Sherlock Holmes was one for me, which is why I love Doctor Who so much, because he's basically a sci-fi Sherlock Holmes with a magic wand. You know, like, uh, and so I was like, Doctor Who. Um, and so um, that character appealed to me. There was some wisdom in his psyche that I wanted to incorporate into my own. And I didn't realize it until much later. I just knew I liked it as a kid. So that absolutely happened. Oh, sure. Legolas was another one. Like, as, as soon as I saw Lord of the Rings and I was like, blonde elf shooting a bow and arrow in the woods, I'm in. <laughs> there, there are multiple, you can totally identify with multiple characters and get, and get different things from them, and that can change over time. So when I was younger, I was all about Legolas, right? And I've reached an age now where I'm like, yeah, but he's sort of dumb. <laughs> right? He's not a terribly thoughtful character. And I'm finding myself now identifying with Elrond. I'm like the lore master who's hanging out in Rivendell. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I'm especially, I'm, I don't like the live action Hobbit movies. I think they're sort of a mess. But when when Hugo Weaving shows up with that banded armor as Elrond, I'm like, nice. <laughs> I mean, this is the guy who fought at the last alliance of men and elves with, you know, Gilgalad and was his standard bearer. I mean, Elrond's tough. You know, he's a cool, he's a cool dude. So I was like, yeah, Elrond, bring it. So yeah, it, it can change over time too.